up dental impressions is a crucial part of accurate uh, diagnostics and wax ups and uh, all sorts of prosthodontic work. So now I used to think that this sort of thing was lab work and the less I knew about it the better but what I've discovered is that the less you know about lab work the less quality the work you get back from the lab is. So in this case I'm doing a lower impression. Now the tongue area of the lower impression is hard to trim afterwards so in this case I'm using some cheap lab putty to fill that in. So we're just mixing some cheap lab putty and then we'll fill it into the uh, tongue area. Now if I was doing an alginate impression then I'd use alginate for the same task because it will stick to the alginate. So here we're putting the lab putty into that tongue area, filling it in. Because lab putty is very cheap, it doesn't cost much to do this. And that just saves us having to trim that whole area once the model is poured. Now I use a uh, type of silicon that's uh, quite good at getting bubbles, so it obviously has quite a lot of surface tension. Uh, now you can see that we have a little, little uh, laminated sheet that we put all our models on as they're setting. This helps keep the bench clean. It also has the patient's name and the procedure on it. So. Now I'm just wetting the model in some detergent there to uh, reduce the surface tension. And I've got pre-measured stone here, so I'm using a one part water to four part stone mix. And I'm using a Vigo vacuum mixer. Now, if you don't use a vacuum mixer, then you tend to get a lot of bubbles all through your stone. You can still pour acceptable models, but they're not as accurate and they're much more bubbly. So, uh, in this case, we mix the flask, just give it a rough mix in the flask and clean off the surface. This machine I've been using for years, so it doesn't look pristine anymore. And then we turn it on and we wait for the vacuum to come up and then let it mix. And after 40 seconds of mixing, we drop the vacuum out again. Now, because this type of uh, mixing bowl is extremely difficult to clean once the plaster is set or the stone is set, it's important that you do it straight away. Now I'm using a vibrating uh, pad. I got this vibrating thing on. I'm not sure where it came from actually. And now I've got the uh, impression with some wetter or some detergent. And at this stage I'm just going to put the stone in very quickly. It will get bubbles for sure while I'm doing this, but I'm just going to very quickly run it around. Now, we have about a minute and a half before the stone starts to go a bit thick. So we don't have to rush. And I'm just running that stone from one side of the impression to the other. Now you can already see there's bubbles everywhere. So if I was to just fill this up, I'd have bubbles in all sorts of crucial places. So now I'm going to vibrate all that stone back out of the model and we're going to get left with a very thin amount of stone and, and it's easy to see any uh, bubbles in the area. So we can just continue to vibrate until those bubbles are gone. We can even get a little plaster knife and poke any areas where the uh, where we can see a bubble. So we can actually poke the bubbles with the plaster knife. Now this uh, process we repeat until we're certain that we have no bubbles so I've put some more in vibrated in and out again and look there's uh, um, still a couple tiny bubbles so we'll repeat the process until we're sure there's none so putting stone in vibrating it out poking any of the bubble areas with the uh, with the wax knife. Now I found another method is to just get very tiny amounts of stone on the wax knife and uh, just fill each cusp very very slowly but anyway that's another method for another day. So I'm now certain that I've got rid of all of the bubbles so I'm going to just start to slowly fill the impression up while it's vibrating on the on that vibrating pad. So I'm just starting at the front and I'm just starting in one area and letting the stone slowly flow around the impression with very small amounts at a time. Yeah, so now one of the things that will most commonly give you problems with impressions 
is if you uh, turn them over too quickly. So once you've filled the impression, you've actually got to let it set quite firmly before you turn it over and put it on its base. If it's meant to be a really accurate impression, then sometimes it's best to just let it set and then put the base on later. It's quite common uh, when I'm training staff to see them, they turn the impression over too quickly and all the stone falls out of the teeth and so you get these giant bubbles in the impression or a big double impression. So we're just filling this up now. Now, you can see that it takes quite a bit of time to get a really good impression. Uh, and also a really good, you also notice I'm using silicon. So a lot of my diagnostic models I use silicon, not elginate, because elginate is just not accurate enough. And I also don't like all the drags and bubbles that you get when you use elginate. I prefer to use silicon. Obviously in some countries it's probably not economic to use silicon for a diagnostic impression, but uh, if you can't use it, you'll get much more accurate. But like any sort of stonework, if you can uh, clean up as much as you can at the time, then there's less clean up to do later when it's all gone hard. So in this case, I'm forming the pad that I'm going to put it on. And uh, notice that I just slide it off the spatula a few. If you try and play with, because it's thixotropic, if you try and play with the stone too much, it will. Uh, it will slump. Now here I'm just tidying up the edges. I, I, I can use a model trimmer so there's no real need to do this but I like to tidy the impression up. I just slide the knife through if you try and um, play with it too much because it's thixotropic it tends to slump. So it's better to just chop through it and slide it off like so. Set, and then we'll have a, in this case it's actually not for a diagnostic model, it's for a uh, anterior midpoint stop appliance, so it's a sectional bite guard. Thank you very much for watching.